All right, Tron and Liberty, the ultimate, I always have ultimate, ultimate mage guide. What does it mean? It means stuff and wand class. In this video, I will try to explain everything that I know and all the experience that I can get from my guildmates who are much higher in the progress and ranks as the mages and ward users. So you will understand where to go, what to do, what stats to use, what traits to use, what is a mage in TL, why we're using wand as a second, the skills for PvE, PvP in LE, best in slot traits and stats for the gear, best in slot slot gear and what to do how to progress in this game. So everything about the mage. My name is PLK. This community is growing so fast. I really love you guys. Thank you for all the comments, for everything that you do. Put the comment below what you want next, what you like or don't like. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next second when we will continue with this video. I don't want to make the huge, the long video, but I have to cover some super important topics. So what is mage in TL? Mage basically a staff user, mid to long term damage dealer with enfeeble mechanic skills which apply as a damage over time to the target. These skills can stack and also influence some other skill effects. Mage also has few burst insta skills like Chain Lightning, which is not chain at all in 90% of the time, Judgment and Inferno Wave, Slow Casting Fireballs and two buffs, one for the casting speed and one for the mana regeneration, and three different free skills, which we'll use mostly in the PvP. For CC, slow your target and escape. Compared to the other classes, stuff user feels okay. It's good for the standard PvE activities like questing, dungeons, open dungeons. It's very good for the EOE grinding on the top 50 level spots combined with a wand, which is important. And even greater AoE grind while we have a rain, which is super cool and unique mechanic, but it's super weird. During the events, mage is kind of average, maybe even lower than average. You're better than tank and you're better than wand user, so <laughs> you're better than tank and a healer. But every other class like bow, dagger, two-handed sword most likely will outperform you. Hmm. Because you can do AoE during events, everybody will steal the mobs, and you have a burst two spells like lightning and judgment, and other spells are more slow, so... In PvP, mages are good. First of all, PvP in this game is only the mass PvP. Small scale and big scale PvP. You don't have solos at all. Sometimes you can find yourself killed by the dagger in the open dungeon during the night, but this is super unique. So in the mass PvP, you're playing as a party. Mage feels himself pretty good in the PvP. You can freeze a target to gangbang it with your party after all, because you know the waves of the enemies and your comrades are fighting with each other for the, for the point of interest. You can burst damage by lighting spells, and you can slow the target that tries to flee with your other ice abilities. To what? To gangbang it with your party after all. Mage also has escape skill to avoid focus attack and lead through the fight, but you are anyway screwed if you bind it by the ball user, so you just will die anyway. Now let's compare mage to other classes in a simple way. Both much better as a single damage dealer in PvP and PvP. Super burst damage. Daggers much better as a single damage dealer in PvP and PvE, but needs better equipment and skill to perform. Can stealth and silent target in PvP, you know, and all this dagger stuff. But as dagger is melee, it's much harder during the dungeons and mechanics of the bosses. Tanks. I mean, come on, this is tanks, they are tanky, they are 15k of HP, different skills, this is tanks. They are super bad during events, they are super bad during their questing, compared to the mages, right? But they are pretty good class. Healers, kinda, you will rarely see the wand user as a primary weapon. It most likely will be the hybrid, like a mage and wand. But sometimes you can see them and they perform kind of close to you, but through the dots. So events are bad, PvE are good, group PvP and PvE is good. Great sword, I mean, mm, better to go to the daggers. And crossbows, nobody using crossbows as a primary, come on. Now, why are we using wands? The wand basically is only one logical pair to the stuff, because there are too much synergy in stats and traits that boss weapons use. Other secondaries for the stuff are more experimental, for one or two passive skills or active skills, somebody using daggers to kill faster, somebody use bows to have more direct DD attacks. But overly, wand is more synergy with the stuff. I will explain. Wands are super good for the party content. You always can help party with the heals and be the healer with a good tech. I actually... All the party content, I'm a healer, but my skills are super low, some of them are still green as a wand. The one have two healing skills, for solo and for the party, and you have to use them only after the buff, the blessed barrier buff, because they will perform much, much more. One has sleep 
which is super good for solo PvP. Unfortunately, we don't have solo PvP in this game, but sleep is super good. You can sleep target during the mass PvP as well, if you have a coordinated party and then do the gang bang to the guy, right? But during the sleep, if you will dot your target three times, it will just die during the six seconds of the sleep. This is incredible. Maybe we'll have some arena or some other solo PvP content in the future, so once we'll perform super good there. So we have sleep, which is OP, but most important for us in the wand is touch of despair, which is the stackable dot damage over time skill. Corrupted magic circle for the EOE dot time of punishment. This is a debuff, so your skills will make more damage. And karmic haze. This thing spread the curses from one target to other targets in the circle. So what you do, you do the touch of despair, the dot, you do the corrupted magic circle, you do the time of punishment, and then you spread it. And then in the end, you have a curse bomb. This is a skill which accumulate all the damage that will be done over time and do it at once. And some of the skills when they are epic have additional effects like longer time, more stacks, and all together, some of my guildmates make by the curse bomb to the boss, to the single target, about 10k damage, which is not as a bow, bow is still bigger damage but pretty close to. Overleaf won't give you invisibility in all PvE activities as a solo player. It gives you a chance to be a healer in all the party content, which is super good, and your teammates and guildmates will love you. And you can go solo to the open dungeons as well and grind by the sleep and the dots and also chain lightning and all this stuff. So you're pretty sustainable, autonomous character with some damage, above average damage, and heals. You know, you have heals, come on. Now let's talk about stats. It's pretty simple. For the stats point that you have during the leveling up your character, you want to go full on to dexterity till 30 stats, because after that it will be two stats for one point of dexterity. So you're going 30 dexterity, then everything else on wisdom till the 30 as well, and then some perceptions. Why dexterity? Because dexterity basically is a magic critical hit. It's a chance of critical hit of your attacks and skills as well. For example, I have magic critical hit almost 1000, which is almost 100% of critical hit. But you need to understand the mobs and the players as well have magic endurance, for instance, which is increase the chance to evade critical hits and it balances it. It will never be the 100%. So it will be difference between your, but magical critical hit as much as possible will influence your damage. We will talk about the traits and stuff from the weapon and armor a little bit later. Now let's talk about the skills, passives and actives. What we are using as the mage. It's me from the future. Some of these things could be changed by the developers, like this new stuff buffs on the screen. But overall understanding of the class will be the same. No worries, guys. Let's go. So as a mage you have two weapons, staff and wand. You have 18 active skills from both of them and 14 passive skills from both of them. Also you have a mastery, but mastery, it looks like mastery is not working right now. It's super simple, wherever you have mastery point, go in the destroy because it will influence your damage if it works properly. Now it's not working properly. So let's talk about the skills. You can see here my active skills pool, which is I will not go by every skill and I will not read the all skill description. You can do it easily by yourself. In the description, you'll find the website with database with all the skills and skill builder. You can try to, you know, to switch it by yourself, to check everything. Now we're talking about how I use it. Oh, you see the typical grind PVE skill pool. So we have chain lightning. As you can see, some uh, most of my skills are purple. Some of my skills are blue. And I even have some of them green, which I'm not using much. But you definitely have to have Chain Lightning and Judgment. It's two skills, they're instance, they're super fast, they're actually doing pretty good damage. If it's possible, please use these skills after the Fireballs. Because Fireballs will inflict burning damage to the target, and both of these skills will have effects during the burning stacks. The Lightning will do more damage by every stack, and Judgment will have chance to be the double judgment. You will cast it two times at once. It's super damaging. The only problem with the fireballs, you are staying at the ground, you can't move and they're super slow. But if it's like just PV grind, you can do the fireballs, then you do lightning, then you do judgment. And somewhere in, in middle of that, you are doing the touch of despair. Touch of despair is the want skill, which is the damage over time. And you're stacking it till it will be three stacks on the target. You're doing all this rotation till it will be three stacks of the touch of despair. Before the fight starts, you are using high locus, which is, should be high focus. What the fuck? <laughs> so you're using high locus, which will increase cooldown speed of the spells. 
And when you have three stacks, you're doing time of punishment, which will reduce the skill resistance. And then you do the curse explosion. Most of the targets, if it's not open dungeon, it's just level 50 mob will die after this chain of skills. I always have the sleep because sometimes you need to sleep one mob or you want to get the resources and you sleep the mob or you have three of them, you sleep one and you know, you're working with two of them. So it's pretty convenient. And also you have the blast barrier. Your defense will increase by huge number for six seconds. And during these six seconds, every healing skill will be much, much bigger. So you have this and then you heal yourself. I can heal about a half of my HP, which is 9K by this blast barrier, solo healing and then AOE healing. This is my active skills. About the passives is pretty simple as well. You have this one for bigger damage from the outer attacks. You have this for the mana. You have this for the max mana and max HP as well. Plus 1200 HP is huge. And then most of the other stuff I'm using from the healing or from the healing passives, which is moderation for the curse. And you remember the curse bomb will be influenced by, by moderation. It will be bigger damage. More healing, more healing, more healing and heal yourself. I can change something from it to more burning damage. But as I told you, most of the targets will die anyway, super fast. So now we are in open dungeon, second floor of the Sileus Abbas. I hope is the right name. So the mobs are pretty with a big HP. I will show you how we deal with them. Start with focus, then touch of despair, then three fireballs. One, two, three, then lightning, then touch of despair, then lightning. Then you have third, then you have punishment and burst attack. Boom. That's how we jump here, guys. Now, for PvP and AoE, it will be a little bit different. So, for PvP, we, we definitely need the Ice Stomp. Maybe we need the Ice Spear. And we definitely will need the Small Screen. Maybe instead of the Higher Focus. So, this thing will freeze the target and your teammates can come and, you know, kill it after 15 seconds. I will show it on the map right now. And the Ice Spear will slow the target. And this thing will allow you just to jump back from the enemies. For the passives is pretty simple most likely you will encounter the daggers so anti-silence is good also this one will increase your damage reduction which is good as well let me show you this is the freeze boom and the target is freeze for the 10 seconds so everybody you can attack it you can do anything everybody just waiting the enemy is cowardly you know flee and one of their guys is here so our party will kill it and if they will try to kill you and you are not buying it you do this Boom. And you run. There, slow it and you run. And also you can do this. It will slow them and do a little bit of damage. That's how we jump. And by the way, about the sleep. So I will sleep this target. So now I have only one enemy, right? I will try to kill this enemy as fast as possible. Now we will freeze him. And now we will teleport from here. So this is super convenient to have this, you know, sleep and freeze. But it mostly for PvP. So now I will show you the clip when I'm doing the AoE during the rain. It's brilliant, but the rain is not always. So to have a good AoE grind, what you need to have, you need to have the Curse Bomb definitely. You need to have the Karmic Haze. You need to have the Inner Focus and you need to have the Punishment. This is how it looks during the rain. Pretty cool, right? And you can do it circles forever because you will have this mana regeneration. You will have this mana regeneration from this thing. Actually, you can put this thing instead of any heals. This thing will grant you mana regeneration after every kill and damage bond. So it's super helpful. So now let's talk about how you can grade your weapon, what weapon you should use and what stats and traits you should use in your gear. So to grade your weapon, you're going here to the gear enchantment and you can enchant your gear here just you know level it up 
you can do one transfer from the lower grade to higher grade. For instance, I had plus nine gloves, blue one, and I just transferred them to make my purple one plus six. And the traits. Let's talk about traits. Traits are super important. So you have three traits. So you have three different traits in every gear. For instance, here you have magic, critical, hit, and then locked and locked. Also, in almost all of the gear, you have one, two, three different fix traits, which is magical critical hit here and max mana. How can you get unlocked these other traits and how you can get the good traits here? So it's super simple. You go into the traits, you click on the stuff and you can upgrade this stuff with any other blue weapon, same rarity with the same trait. So if I will find the crossbow in which you have magic critical hit, which is unlikely, you don't have these crossbows, it will be most likely in every other stuff, let's say on the marketplace. So we're going to the marketplace, you're looking for the stuffs, every blue stuff here, for instance, this one, magical critical hit. If I will buy this stuff, I can upgrade this trait to the next level. So it was 20, magical critical hit 20, now it's 40, it will be 60 or 80, I don't know exactly. To unlock the trait, you need the same stuff. To upgrade the trait, you can have any other stuff with this trait. You can also do it with the green ones, but with the green ones, chance is only 10%. If it's failed, you have blessing, which is a higher chance to get it in the next one. But to unlock, you have to get the same stuff, which is elite resistance stuff for me with a new trait. So for instance, I want another trait. So I will go here and I will find the trait that I like. For example, I want the magic hit. I will buy this and I will unlock and it will be magic hit 20 as well. And this thing will work for every other possible gear as well. So this is the end game of the game. You will have 50 levels super fast. You will have all blue gear plus nine super fast. Then you will do this. You will try to enchant it to add additional traits and you will try to level up your skills because it's pretty money consuming. Now, what stats do we need from the weapon and gear? The main stats for the mages will be, as I said, dexterity. It's our focus because it's a damage and evasion. Also good. And wisdom is okay. Wisdom will give you more mana, more infinable chance, burning chance, more mana regeneration, which is always good. And magic critical hit. This is something that you can have from the fixed weapons and armor. Let's talk about the weapons. As a trait, I will recommend three of them. First one is magical critical hit. The second one is magic hit, which is the chance of you to hit the target. And this is the big one. Some of the world bosses are level 52 and you will miss them. Some of the other characters have defense, evasion and endurance. You need the magic hit to hit the target, so to increase your damage. And also the last one, the biggest one, it will be the most costly one for you as a trait, magic heavy chance attack. What does it mean? You have a critical hit, which will add additional damage to your attack. But this thing will have x2 to your damage. So it is a super low chance, but if you will collect from all the weapons and gear, the big chance for the magic heavy chance attack, sometimes you will hit for like 2000 by the lightning and it will be x2. So it will be 4000 of the damage. Some of the balls can one shot you because of that. So magic heavy chance attack. It's the, one of the main. So magic crit, magic hit and magic heavy chance attack. Now let's talk about what weapon is the best for the mage. Best in slot. Best in slot is a purple stuff with a big damage and some additional effects, but it's super hard to get it. So you have two options. The blue one, super simple. You will craft it during the main quest, which is, which is elite resistance stuff, this one. And the second one is Toblek or Toblek, whatever we call it. You can get it from uh, the boxes from the dungeon. So we go to the dungeon, 50 level, and you can get the box. And from this box, you can get Toblek, Thunderous, Soul. Why? Because it's pretty... S Why? Because you have this blue one, right? Elite resistance stuff with damage 65 to 94. And you have the next one, the purple, that you can craft as well. It's pretty simple, actually. 66 to 106. The difference is super small. But to enchant it, not just to plus 9, which is, will be also super costly, but to add additional traits, you need many of these elite resistance stuffs at the beginning, like two of them at least, and other blue weapon. But to have additional traits for this one, you need all of the purple weapons and two additional the same stuffs, which will be super costly. But the traits will be the same. So basically the difference is about 15 damage. Super small. If you want to go to the purple stuff, go to this one. You can get it 
it's more damage from the bottom part and it have additional traits like melee range magical critical hit plus 18 per one meter of distance between you and the target which is the huge critical hit chance but it will be costly as well so i propose the following for weapon and armor and everything go with the blue craft as much as possible of blue get all the traits that you want and your character will be much stronger if you will have all the good traits from different armor and weapon and all this stuff you will be much stronger than the character just with purple plus nine much much stronger and the skills as well so my proposition is go with the blue one enhance it go with the traits and you will be happy and then you will have everything and you will be pretty strong and you will have enough money on the marketplace you can start to you know to change part by part first weapon then chest and so on for the armor for the armor is basically what you need dexterity as well for the damage wisdom and perception is okay and any possible endurance or protection or defense that you can get from the armor let me explain so you in the game we have different types of the chances and different types of the resistances you can see there burning resistance stun resistance sleep resistance silent resistance and so on so you need to decide what you need better from the resistances and you also have a protection which is the evasion endurance skill resistance and damage reduction we still don't have red damage reduction in the game i didn't see it maybe it's some purple but evasion is good it will increase the chance to evade the attack endurance is good against the crit melee or range endurance is a good idea skill damage resistance is super good and you choose what resistance do you need like bind resistance will be really good one and stun resistance will be also the good one but it should accumulate you can't have 10 10 10 and 10 it will not work you need to accumulate the one resistance right or one endurance or one evasion it will be better for your character basically what you can get for the rare which is blue armor pieces it's the elite resistant magic garb it will give you magical crit hit mana and traits that you can use elite resistant hood and so on all the pieces could be elite resistant for the mages which is max mana and mana again the mana regeneration at the beginning will be something that you will need or something like this elite wizard cloak it gives you magical critical hit and max mana as well when you level up your gear you will level up your stats as well so magical critical hit here 100 that's why i have 1000 close to 100 percent without any endurance now during the questing of the main quest you will have the recipe for the special resistant magic garb and you can go for it i did that but maybe the better idea will be to get all the blue and the traits as we discussed right what is the best in slot let me show you the best slot for the mage as a dd will be mother nature set mother nature set will give you as a set additional durations for all your burning which is a big one and also the range the range is super critical for the mage so this is good but why it's beast because in particular if you will go and take for instance miracle of mother nature clothing which is chest you will have additional dexterity plus three wisdom plus one and magic heavy attack chance this is huge and also you have possibility for the traits what we want i think melee evasion is really good mana regeneration also good and any other endurance some of the pieces have cooldown speed which is super good but overly you need some protection max health is good and cooldown speed is good for the sisters it's pretty much the same the same stats you need but they have different traits so we're trying to find some accessory that will give you any type of resistance magic hit or magical critical hit and as a traits they have skill damage boost which is super good you need that mana generation is okay sleep chance is okay enfeeble chance is okay for example you can use something like chieftain ring what i have let's see i have two different weapons eight resistance stuff plus nine only one trait i have elite resistant magic scepter with magical hit huge and it also give me a magical crit as well i have resistant hood elite wizard cloak the resistance magic guard purple one i have first purple item that i dropped from the raid boss peach black punishment gloves they have magical critical hit mana regeneration and sleep chance magic evasion is not so good but we'll change it later elite resistant line and pants i dropped the recipe for these ones i really like them because of the magic hit and feeble chance for the accessory i have this by the main quest it giving me more magical critical hit and cooldown speed wild resistant bracelet chieftain ring as i said set from the questing and the belt 
health regeneration and money regeneration. And health regeneration carry kind of trash. I need to change it. So one more time. The blue with the good traits is better than the purple. That's there. And there you have it, boys. I hope you liked the video. I hope it's not too long. How long is it? Oh, fuck. But I'm trying my best to you. Please comment below what do you think is better for the mage. Please help me to improve my mage as well. Because it's kind of, you know, super hard to test things. To get the good weapon. To, good, to get the good trace. That, but this is the game. This game is for, for years. That's why this game is good. I'm having pretty much fun with the mage anyway. Even if it's worse than the bow. I'm a hybrid class. I can heal. I can damage. I like the fantasy of the mage. And I hope you like it as well. I was happy to see you. It's PLK. Please subscribe to the channel. It will mean a world for me. Love you guys. See you next one. Bye.